this is part two of the video. I apologize for the break. Uh, something happened while I was shooting the video and I didn't want to reshoot it. So if you watch part one, you'll see how we got to here. And now we're going to finish off deriving the equation of ellipse and talk a little bit about a couple of the properties real quick. So <clears throat> from here, I'm going to distribute the a squared term to all four of these pieces. So I have a to the fourth minus 2a squared cx plus x squared c squared equals <clears throat> a squared x squared minus 2a squared xc plus a squared c squared plus a squared y squared. All right, looks like a big mess. Let's get these pieces organized. First off, notice I have a minus 2a squared cx and a minus 2a squared xc. Those are the same term. I could add that to both sides to get rid of it. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put everything with an x and y on one side and everything without an x and y on the other. So I've got the a to the fourth. And over here I've got this term here. So minus a squared c squared. This term I'm going to move over to this side. So I have a squared x squared. Then notice, remember I move this over to this side. Then minus x squared c squared. That came from subtracting this off of both sides. Plus a squared y squared. All right. Now, I need to do a little factoring. This isn't really obvious if you've never done it before. I'm going to factor an a squared out of this term. So a squared times a squared minus c squared equals, and over here I'm going to factor out the x squared. x squared from these two terms times a squared minus c squared plus a squared y squared. Lastly, I'm going to divide everything by a squared times a squared minus c squared. Minus c squared and a squared times a squared minus c squared. Okay, now notice what happens. We're going to get a lot of canceling. Cancel, 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 cancel. That's where the one's going to come from. These terms are going to cancel and these terms are going to cancel. So, what that's going to leave us with on this left-hand side, and I'm going to switch it over to the right-hand side, is a 1. Here, I get left with x squared over a squared. <clears throat> and here, I get plus y squared over a squared minus c squared. Now, a couple things I want to point out. This is our general form. We're going to do a couple things um, before all is said and done. So first off, things I want you to notice. First off, the a squared minus c squared is actually going to be b squared. So a squared minus c squared equals b squared, which gives us the more common form that we see x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. All right. What that means then is whenever we got to find our focal length c, well, we can rearrange this and then add the c squared over, bring the uh, b squared over. And what that tells us is that b, well, we know b is the square root of a squared minus c squared. Therefore, if we solve this thing for c, c equals the square root of a squared minus b squared. That's always going to give us our focal length. Also, a is always going to be larger than c, so we know a squared will be larger than c squared, so we know that that's always going to be a positive value. So this basically gives us our form. And what we're going to see is if we're centered at 0, 0, 
then if we're along the y-axis, in other words, if we're where y equals, if we're, excuse me, if we're where x equals 0, we would get y squared over b squared equals 1, or y equals plus or minus b. So that tells us that this is the horizontal line y equals positive b, this is the horizontal line y equals negative b. Real similarly, we could see that this is the vertical line, x equals negative a, and x equals a. So a lot of these things that are going on in our ellipse come from the definition of an ellipse.